Hey, this is Paul on DualShockers TV for DualShockers.com. I'm here with Warren Spector, Vice President and Creative Director of Disney Interactive's Junction Point. And we're here to talk about Disney Epic Mickey 2, The Power of Two. I th got that all right, right? Cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, the first game, it, it really... Uh, it exploded in a way that I don't think even the studio expected. It, uh, you, and with Des Disney Epic Mickey 2, you had a chance to actually lend towards the canon of Disney's uh, like narrative. And uh, now we have Oswald and Gus. They have voices. And how, how did the studio feel about being able to add to that? Well, it was such an honor, you know. I mean, we, everybody at the studio is, you know, a crazy Disney fan now. All the non-Disney fans have gone away, right? And uh, so to to get to contribute to Disney's future is really kind of amazing. I mean, ten years ago, I doubt they would have let a, a video game give voice to a character like Oswald or Gus the Gremlin. But now it's just, I think it's a reflection of how the biggest media company in the world feels about video games. Uh, we got to give Oswald a voice for the first time ever. So, uh, by the way, it's Frank Welker, who if, you, if you're at all an animation fan, you have heard Frank Welker's voice, trust me. And we got Carrie Elwes to do the voice of uh, Gus Gremlin, so if you're a movie fan, you know who Carrie Elwes is. Um, and just to know that our scripts and our character descriptions and our personality profiles were, uh, were the, what, what Disney character voice used to cast those roles, and the fact that we got the final say and we got to direct the performers uh, was just amazing. Um, it was uh, spoken about earlier, but I know that Disney's actually really strict about uh, their characters interacting, and I know that with uh, Mickey, he's allowed to kind of touch upon every world. But in what way did th that freedom actually help the gameplay? Well, we, we needed uh, as much freedom as we could. The whole idea of, of, of Wasteland, the world in which the Disney Epic Mickey games are set, um, it, it, the whole idea is it's a mashup of things that don't fit together. It's it's Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. Okay, look, not to get too serious about this, but I mean it's Oswald's. You know he's 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 trying to like win the love of his father, Walt Disney. I mean Walt, you created me. Why did you why did you like cast me aside for this little mouse Mickey? You know, and so he's trying to build a world that he's never seen in the image of his his dad's fondest dream. Walt's dream was Disneyland, and he's trying to create something like that. So it's got to have pieces of, of the parks, of all the different parks, and it's got to have pieces of all the different movies that Walt made over the years. Um, so we had to be able to sort of mash things up that didn't go together and make them feel like they belonged together. That's, uh, it's pretty awesome to actually see. Um, in the Epic Mickey 2, well, uh, the first game, it really you kind of pushed like the creativity with the thinner and the paint and everything like that. But in Epic Mickey 2, there is, uh, there's kind of like an extra consequence to it. There's a persistence. And uh, in what way do you feel that that is going to help the game, or well, rather the franchise, from now into the future? Well, you know, I, I, I don't really think about it in terms of how it's going to help the game or the franchise in the future. It's just, you know, what's the one thing games do that nothing else can do? You know, not movies, not plays, not opera, not anything. You, exactly. It's interactive, right? So if you're, if you're interactive and all of your, your choices are false, like if the only choice you get to make in a game is, what gun do I use to kill this thing? You know, how interactive is that? Or, oh, uh, there is a puzzle I must solve to unlock this door. I mean, how interactive is that? What we want to do in the Disney Epic Mickey games is make every player a storyteller. Everybody tells their own story. It's not that there's a bad guy, you must kill it. It's not that there's a puzzle, you must solve it. It's not that there's a platform, you must jump on it. It's, we need you to accomplish this thing. How are you going to do it? Go. <laughs> You know, and so every player becomes a storyteller. Choices you make have to have consequences. Those consequences have to be meaningful to the player. They have to last forever. That's why it's important. It's what, it's what games do. And it's the only thing I think that makes us unique. So, of course, we have to do it. Well, it's uh, really nice to see at an actual, like, well, actual autonomy in a game. Or And, um, well, does... Disney Epic Mickey 2 is set to hit on November 18th, which of course brings up the question of the Wii U. And how do you feel that uh, Epic Mickey is going to, uh, well, and be enhanced by the Wii U's extra components? 
Well, you know, the, 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 the having two screens thing is really fascinating to me. I mean, it's the, the Wii U is first out of the gate with that, but you can sort of see that as clearly an important part of gaming's future, having multiple screens that interact with each other. And um, for us on the Wii U, we're, we're, we're just kind of taking our first tentative steps. So uh, you'll be able to access uh, our sketches. There are little uh, tools, basically, that you can bring into the world wherever you want. Uh, a fairy sketch that negates gravity, uh, a TV sketch that sort of a, attracts anybody. I mean, because, of course, we're all fascinated by TV, right? <laughs> and, um, you know, so you'll be able to access the sketches from there. But the most important thing we're doing with that second screen is actually having a real-time map. <laughs> so if you ever get lost in games, I know I do, um, you know, having the map down there so you can look at the screen and go, oh, where am I? Look down at the second screen and go, oh, now I know where I am, and I have to go over there. Okay. Having a real-time map is hugely important for you know player direction and, and knowing where you're supposed to go. Uh, so uh, we're, we're really taking advantage of that. Uh, but there's plenty more we can do with that second screen in the future, and it'll be fun to fun to play with that. Well, it's, uh, it looks very promising. Um, D Disney Epic Mickey 2, The Power of Two, will hit, as I mentioned, on November 18th. You can get it on, well, I, there are a lot of various platforms you can get it on. And I would list all of them, but I don't think we actually have enough time for that. Uh, suffice it to say, if it's a current console you, or computer system, you can get it on that. Um, also, keep an eye out for Disney... Epic Mickey Power of Illusions on the 3DS, and that is a nice little 16-bit side-scroller that I am going to, well, have to get a 3DS for, and it looks really promising as well. <laughs> it's, it was so nice to talk to you, Mr. Spector. Uh, again, this is Paul on DualShockers TV for DualShockers.com.